Finland Saga, Season 2, Episode 21. I don't think there's many of Kettle's forces left. Where were you? Well, I think there are going to be a lot of vacancies. Wow, bold of him. Say that to Canute. Something about Floki that makes me feel like he's not trustworthy <laughs> to anyone. Yeah, yeah, I was kind of just thinking this. I'm kind of with the floating head on this one. This is such a perfect depiction. Oh my god, this is so amazing. This road. <laughs> this head just floats off into the distance. Wow. Canute has some doubts, huh? I think there's a seductive trap in thinking that Canute is principled. Now, he's not all that bad. Simply because he's not the absolute worst he could be, or he's comparatively better than maybe other people would be in the same situation. And I guess that much at least is not wrong. But what's interesting is that even Canute knows. I mean, he's talking to himself. I don't think he really wants this either. On a much smaller scale, I understand and know the trap of, you know, you cross the line towards a goal. And then the fact that you feel like you've betrayed something you thought was sacred, or you did something that you're, you're not proud of, makes the goal all the more important for you to accomplish because you need to justify it. You need to double down because otherwise what was it for? Then the sins you've committed are the only things you have to show for anything. It's just all you have is the guilt. So then that pushes you farther into the obsession of the goal and that makes it easier to justify more wrongdoing and increasingly expanding line into what you're you're allowing yourself to do. And then you may not even achieve the goal. And even if you do achieve the goal, will it bring you the satisfaction you thought it would? Because you still have the memory of all the things you did wrong. And will that goal solve the problem you think it's addressing? Or is there a deeper fundamental problem that's more existential that you maybe could have dealt with without any wrongdoing? Maybe it was an internal struggle to begin with. At the very least, it's encouraging to me that it's Canute himself who is thinking this and experiencing this. It's not, I mean, his father's gone. It's it's inside Canute. He lives in his own heart. He sees the path clearly, it seems. At least in certain moments of clarity. Einer, man. Oh no, I, I, I'm not sure I want to relive this. Does he know? He doesn't know Thorfinn's left, does he? I could be wrong, but I feel like that, that moment is similar to the one Thorfinn had. There was sunlight coming out of the clouds for both of them, and the ocean in the background. Thorfinn's revelation was about God watching, and therefore perhaps his responsibility. You know, God sees all, sees all that you do. You have this heavenly weight pressing down upon you that, you know, you have to do your best to shoulder. I wonder what conclusion Einar comes to. Episode 21, Courage. Well, Omar just left. I would not, I would not, I would not, I would not be able to stand here. I wonder how the author feels about war. He's one of the lucky ones. He gets it now, we didn't before. It took a while, but he got there. Maybe time to join Thorfinn's cause. Uh, honestly, yes, yes. You know what? I, like, well, I actually really don't like this trope where uh, in media, movies, shows where the author uses throwing up as like a visual cue of someone's emotional state. It's, it's kind of weak. It's just a very easy choice as opposed to, say, dialogue or shot composition or a whole combination of factors that might be more artistic than just having someone hurl. But this is a case where it's 100% right and justified. It's like, yeah, that is the reaction. That probably would be me. I'm feeling a little bit nauseated just watching the scene and it's animated. No. <laughs> are you not? Are you in the same field? Are you in? The, are you here? Where are you? She, maybe she's in shock. Poor Swirgle just got dragged into all this. 
決めてくれ。I don't think. You get out there, get a sword. What do we gotta do? Become slaves? God forbid. This woman is always so charming. She threw a helmet at him. Why? Stank, you need to ally with Thorfinn. I admire the, the optimism and the confidence, if nothing else. Alright, yeah, Valhalla and all that. I think we know Almor's answer. Thorgal's gonna be very disappointed. Oh, I don't know what's more terrifying. Going back out there and facing Knut's army or saying no to Big Brother Thorgil. Omar's like, you know what would be a good job for me that I never considered? Farming. <laughs> Farming seems alright now, for some reason. <laughs> yeah, shut up. Put on that bucket you threw and get a sword and get out there. The embarrassment is not the worst thing you can deal with. I, I, that's true. It's pretty heavy weight to bear. Of course, it's not his fault, but he definitely was used as a vehicle for this. Right, right. That's kind of the key. Take some weight off his shoulders. Yeah, now we're kind of gotten more accurately to it. Right, right. They'll find a, a way. They'll find a reason always. I mean, this is courage in a sense. Omar's come a long way through a very tragic route. Sympathy for Omar. He, I mean, he's been a comical character. He's been the butt of jokes. Like, I don't know. It seems like his biggest fault was just being sheltered, living in ignorance, not really understanding the world, perhaps just being spoiled by his environment. It's tough because I think the only worldview that's that's practical, that, that works when applied universally, is the idea that everybody always has responsibility for everything that they do. But obviously it's more complicated because you don't know what you don't know. There's like this tipping point you gotta reach, it's a line you gotta cross where you're aware of that. And that's when responsibility kind of really, be, really, ultimately begins. The reason I say I, I think ultimately you have to treat everyone as being responsible always is because that's perhaps the best way to get to that point where people understand that they're responsible. But there's that sympathetic point where it's like, okay, Omar just really didn't know enough to understand what was driving him and understand that he didn't have to be driven by it. And so here we are and now he knows. <laughs> This is the strongest Omar's ever been. I mean, like, really, genuinely being someone. Speaking of finding a reason to fight, I feel like Thorgal might just do it anyway. Snake needs more than this. He needs more than this battle. He's got it. I don't know. <laughs> He has some great lines, like great badass one-liners. Can't help but, I don't know, like I said many times, can't help but love something about Thorgal. In all his terribleness, he's pure. Maybe it's time to do some work. I think we're all proud of Omar. Poor Leaf, it's just, he's... He just occurs to repeat the cycle again and again. He finds Thorfinn and Thorfinn leaves. And there's something he can do. He's just like a parent that sends their kid off. Leave knows. I mean, maybe that was Einar's realization. Arnie had to thank Einar and Thorfinn. They're the, the wolf and the deer in the forest. We gotta stick together. There's something about Leif Thorfinn that reminds me of uh, certain moments, or a certain moment at least, in Avatar The Last Airbender with Ira Zuko. Time and time again, Leif has watched Thorfinn, seen where he is, wanted to protect him, understanding things that Thorfinn maybe doesn't understand, but also realizing that he has to let Thorfinn walk his own path. That's a sacrifice. It's no small thing on Leif's part, or on the part of the, the caretaker, the, the elder, or the parent, or whatever, to keep a watchful eye and safeguard, but recognize that sometimes you do more harm than good by being overly protective, and that part of one's journey is making mistakes and following their instincts, and letting them have their own adventures and find their own destiny. 
company. And at least for Leaf now, he's seeing that it's working. Thorfinn is, is in danger, true, but he's not the same Thorfinn. He's growing by leaps and bounds every time they meet. Maybe it's hard to pinpoint, but I think there's a line you can reach where you're not enabling someone to follow their worst impulses, but you're also recognizing their autonomy. So like both Iroh and Leaf, when they meet, they say what they got to say. They say how they feel. They're not sugarcoating it. They're not patronizing the person they care about. They lay out what they think is going to happen and what the other person needs clearly, then step back. Speaking of cards to endure insults, Thorfinn just who cares? Wonder how far Thor's legacy still still has spread. It's been a while. You wouldn't know it by looking at him now, but no surprise there, really. You're not going to beat this out of Thorfinn. And this is Thorfinn's battle again and again and again and again. For all his life, this is what he's chosen. Boy, can you do you, are you gonna be surprised? Thorfinn son of Thor's. Ring a bell. <laughs> yep. Touching the scar is a great touch. That's too bad. Yeah, he knows too. He's just missing this guy off. I'm gonna tire him out, I guess. I don't know. What else do you do? Then tire everyone else out in the crowd. What is this guy holding? His helmet's full of silver. Oh, I don't shows up. Gotta stick together. He's right. Well, they're betting. That's what they're counting. Oh, 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 that's actually really clever. He's gonna clean up. That's how Thorfinn got rich. Oh. I thought he was gonna use the money to buy an audience, but that's a lot more direct. That's clever. I see you 10, I raise you 50. 90s? What are the odds on that one? What's the over-under? That person is gonna clean up. Someone's retiring from the Yams Vikings today. I've had so many situations where I've been in conflict with... Like, where I wanted no part of the conflict at all. And I feel like I'm just seeing the situation from this bird's eye view and want no part of it. And I just feel it so clearly, but I also know there's no possible way I can communicate it effectively to the, the person who's being antagonistic. It's a frustrating and, and a sad feeling. And there's a little bit of pity in there as well. It's like, this is your... This is it for you. This is your world that you live in. It's hard to know what to do sometimes because there's an instinct to engage. Especially, I think, for certain personalities when you just see something is so clearly wrong and you feel like or your your operating system is well if you knew the truth then you would be different right even though not everyone operates that way not all things come from logic a lot of things come from emotion the, there's a pull like oh, i just explain it to you if i explain it to you if i can make you see my point of view all this will go away everything will be fine but a lot of the time it's pearls before swine not not to, you know call people pigs or whatever but they're just not in a place at that moment at least where they're gonna get anything and so it's maybe just better not to get involved Thorfinn has no choice at this point since he's encircled and he has a higher goal which is seeing canoe it's pretty genius this whole gambling thing Oh, the stakes just got a lot higher. But that means he has, it's not that he can dodge, he has to get hit. He has to actually take blows. I don't know if that plays a Thorfinn's strength. If it was dodge 100 blows, I'd be like, yeah, okay. Or like survive 100 throw, uh, punch attempts. Who would have thought, right? There's, there was some goodness here, despite everything. It was the couple individuals that were good, noble animals in the forest. I think we all know Moraner will fall on this. This is gonna suck. And he took that personally. I mean, uh, what's the upside here? He'll get 
tired, the punches will get weaker. I think if you survive the first 50, maybe you got a shot. Oh yeah, that's no problem. All you gotta do is survive 50 punches to the, the face. I might have taken about that much in my fight in Osaka. Sure felt like it the next day. Where's my audience with the king? I mean, it's not even easy to punch someone that many times. Your your hand gives out. Maybe he tries to get the, the guy to hit the hardest part of his head every time. Wear his knuckles down. But then again, draw the bear killer. Seems like he's throwing a few punches in his day. In Thorfinn we trust. One thing that just occurred to me though, is is that even their gamble to make? Like, how do they force Canute to see him? This episode was called Courage and there's a lot to go around. Omar his journey is really satisfying. Like, it's a really sad one, but it's hard for me to hate on him at all. Just as I said, it feels more like ignorance than evil. And then, like, as soon as he understands, he's there, right? He's courageous. Thorfinn obviously showing courage. I mean, the, the bet is one thing, the gamble is one thing, but even just showing up, even plunging himself into the enemy army for an audience with Canute. And, and also, interestingly, being a fully formed, perfect version of the very thing Omar was saying, where there's a courage in being able to withstand insults and not have your pride be so fragile. Like, for me, watching Thorfinn deal with these insults, you know it means nothing to him. Like, his vision is so big. The insults might even invoke some kind of love, you know? I understand you. I understand where you're coming from, and I understand who you are, and I feel no malice in this at all. And as always, let's not sleep on Einar. Also throwing himself into this for Thorfinn. Being able to pull himself out of his despair, his misery, to refocus on what's important in the moment, which is his friend. He could have collapsed into a heaping ball of, of nothing, but he got up, despite the intensity of the pain he's surely experiencing. And then, and this is this is a weird one, but I'll give a little bit to Canute as well. I mean, Canute is not on a great path, and his reflections on what he's doing may not be voluntary. They probably are just springing up automatically because, you know, in his heart, he feels some guilt about what he's doing. Nevertheless, there is some strength in that, in the fact that he he hasn't totally lost it. The evil actions are still there, but there's a there's still a humanity in Canute that seems to me like he's preserving, he's keeping active. And it's not too late, you know, that's there. He's showing he has a capability to think, to still feel, to evaluate his actions, and he may have the strength, he may have the, the courage, though it'll take a lot, to let his atrocities fully be atrocities and end the path of destruction there, and just take that hit of knowing that he did what he did and he can't undo it, but that he will not do bad anymore. So he's not unreachable. That makes the meeting between Thorfinn and Knut very exciting. Mm -hmm.